Y'all hold on. The man's in the tent. He's coming. <laughs> Y'all, thank you for coming. Those watching by television, this, this is what America looks like, South Carolina style, right here. This my favorite wife, Peggy, brought her with me. I'll be very brief. President Trump's going to walk out here in just a minute, but just for the record, when he went into the White House, I went into the State House just about a month later, and South Carolina has been booming ever since. We've been soaring because of his policies for four years, but then in January 2021, things changed. They changed nationally. We're still, bo still booming here in South Carolina, but every day we had to fight the Biden administration. It's just one thing after another. We spent half our time in court instead of working. So we couldn't believe it. What did they do? They sent the FBI to the school boards. Couldn't believe that. Then we couldn't believe it. They sent the vaccine mandates down, the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine, Coast Guard, everybody. Yep. And if that wasn't enough, then they destroyed the borders, and they still destroy it right now. Cartels sending people from all over. And then they put a judge on the Supreme Court who could not explain what a woman was. Does anybody here know what a woman is? How about a man? They destroyed our energy dependence, been borrowing money by the trillions. Our children will have to pay for it with interest. And from 2016 until now, they have been doing anything and everything they could, legal, illegal, ethical, unethical, unheard of, unprecedented, to do one thing. And that includes two bogus impeachments and four baloney indictments to do what? To stop one man, to stop our man from being president of the United States. Well, but he won't stop. We won't stop. We believe in America. We believe in Donald Trump. And ladies and gentlemen, history and man, the history shows us that the man and the moment have met. It's Donald Trump for America, Donald Trump for South Carolina, Donald Trump for all of us, Donald Trump, President of the United States, Donald Trump.
It's great to be back in this incredible state with the hardworking, God-fearing patriots who make our country run. You love our country. You make it run. And it's a true honor to be here at Sportsman's Boats. We just took a tour, and they are beautiful boats. I think I might have to order one, Henry. I don't know. Over the past 12 years, Sportsman has become one of the most respected names in the industry. And as I saw just moments ago, every single inch of these beautiful boats is designed and built right here in South Carolina by very skilled South Carolina hands. I know what that means, and proud South Carolina hearts. I want to thank Sportsman's owners, Tommy Hancock and Brinkley Melvin, as well as the CEO of South Carolina Boating and Fishing Alliance. Get us Brannon, not, not Bandon. Get us Brannon. You're a great governor. This is a great governor. He kept this place open. But he really kept it open. He didn't, you know, say, oh, gee, I kept it open. I kept, no, he kept it open. Henry McMaster and Peggy, thank you so much for being here. These are, uh, it's a great, a great couple. They're great people. What a great governor he's been. It was one of the reasons I got her out of here so I could make him governor of the state. You know, I never said that. That was a big deal. Let her move and look at Henry there. And that's, and people are very happy about it. Henry, great. You know, Henry was with me right from the beginning of the campaign, early on. I thought she'd be with me, but she uh, went a different way. And I said, wow, that's unusual. And uh, he was there. And then we won in a landslide. And I said, I'll take Henry any day. I'll take Henry any day. And we got him in. Henry, you're doing a great job as governor. Thank you very much. Another man who's always there. He's always, I'll tell you what, when I need help on the left, he's great. He's great. And he's my friend, too. Lindsey Graham, wherever you are. Lindsey, thank you. Oh, no, no. He helps me on the left. We need help sometimes. Republicans shouldn't need help on the left, but he helps me. Also, somebody I think you love, and I love him. I remember a little a burst of real anger and heart years ago in Congress. I'm sure nobody remembers that. Representative Joe Wilson. Joe, thank you. They went after him for that. He didn't realize even at the time how popular that made you, Joe. You were only telling the truth. And somebody who I'm so proud of, he came in and we came in together in a way because I said, this is a guy that's going to be fantastic as a congressman. Russell Fry. Russell, thank you, Russell. Thank you. And a friend of mine and a great congresswoman, she's done a job like few others, and she has courage, the courage of her conviction. And she takes a lot of, uh, she said, yes, yeah, she has, and she does. She takes a lot of heat sometimes, but she ends up always being right. Marjorie Taylor Greene. Marjorie, thank you. Thank you very much, for great job. And, and another friend, friend of mine who's done fantastically in the campaign. She's campaigning as hard as I am. She wants uh, to see a big victory in South Carolina for us. Lieutenant Governor Pam Evett. Thank you, Pam. Thank you, Pam. And Treasurer Curtis Loftus. Thank you very much. My Ambassador Curtis. Thank you very much. My Ambassador who really was a good job. I won't tell you which country, but I sent him to a country where they have the greatest desserts in history. And this was not a good thing to do to Ed McMullen. This was not good. Stand up, Ed. Show him how slim you are. See that? This was not a good thing, but that's okay. And today, I'm honored to receive the endorsements of your Attorney General, Alan Wilson. Thank you, Alan. Thank you very much. That's a big endorsement. That's a big endorsement and your Secretary of State, Mark Hammond. Thank you, Mark. Thank you very much, Mark. I appreciate it. I'm also delighted to announce that your Lieutenant Governor will be heading up the launch of our brand-new coalition, Small Business Leaders for Trump. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great. With your help, we're going to win the South Carolina primary by a lot. We're up by about 50 points, but we don't want to take it for granted. Henry said, never take anything for granted, right? But we're going to win that primary big. You know, we won the state twice by record numbers, literally record numbers. And uh, we're going to do it again. We did phenomenally 
here. We've always done well here, and we're going to do it uh, at a level that nobody's ever seen. So we broke the record twice. We're going to break it a third time. We're going to break our own record. So less than five months from now, we're going to defeat crooked Joe Biden. We're going to take back our country, and we're going to make America great again. So we've, so we've come, come today to the perfect place to talk about how we're going to end the economic catastrophe known as Bidenomics. You know, he thought that was a good. It was meant to be bad. It was originally done in the uh, financial pages to talk about how bad it was. And he said, oh, I love the name. I love the name. So now he goes around and he talks about it like it's good. It's really bad. And I spoke to the incredible owners of Sportsman, and they were telling me, so different now than it was just three years ago, sportsmen and other boat builders across the state exemplify the American manufacturing muscle. Incredible how big a boat business it is in this state that will help turn the Biden economic bust into another Trump economic boom. That's what you had. You had the greatest boom in history, most successful economy in history. Under my leadership, we built the greatest economy in the history of the world. In fact, we did it twice, if you remember. We had to do it twice, and now we're going to do it a third time, but it's going to be bigger, better, stronger than ever before. Ever before. But we had the greatest economy in the history, uh, really, of the world. We have the — we had — and then COVID came in, and we had to do it again. And we did a great job with COVID. Nobody knew what the hell it was. And we did a great job, and then we handed it over after a horrible, horrible — we got many millions of more votes. I was told if you got the same number, 63 million, you win easily. And we got millions and millions more. We got the most votes of any sitting president in history. And they say we lost the election. I don't think so. <laughs> terrible, terrible what's going on between bad elections and open borders, what's going on to, in our country. And that's almost the least of it. You could go through point after point. There's nothing good happening. In four short years, we passed the largest tax cuts and reforms in American history. We cut more job-killing regulations, your boat companies and every other company would tell you that, than any administration in history. Broke every record. We slashed the price of gasoline down to $1.87 per gallon. We created 20,000 manufacturing jobs right here in South Carolina. We delivered $140 million to ensure that Charleston has the deepest water port on the East Coast. Henry would drive me crazy. Sir, we need that money. Right, Henry? He'd call me and say, sir, we got to make that the deepest port. I was only surprised. You say the East Coast. Don't you want to also include the West Coast? That'll be next. He's, he's got that idea, I can tell you. But uh, you do have you have the deepest on the East Coast now, and that was a big deal, and it was a great job, and the governor did a great job in getting it done, and everybody else who helped. These are just a few of the reasons your boat-building industry exploded and prospered like never before, and it was all under President Trump, and it was my honor. It now generates over $6 billion a year and employs 26,000 South Carolina workers. Think of that. And I'm very honored to say that my last two years, 2019 and 2020, were the best two years that South Carolina boat builders and South Carolina business has ever had. Is that right, Ed? Ever. Ever had. Every single major boat manufacturer in this state expanded their operations during the Trump administration. There wasn't one that went down even a little bit. They all went big. They went very big. They couldn't uh, make them fast enough. When I left office, business was roaring like a 400-horsepower Mercury outboard motor. I just looked at them. They are seriously good-looking. But then the economy slammed into a pile of rocks known as Crooked Joe Biden. Crooked Joe. We used to call him Sleepy Joe. Now we call him Crooked Joe. I took it away from Crooked Hillary. That was a good day when I took it. She had the best day. I think she celebrated that night. Now we call her beautiful Hillary. She's a beautiful woman. Crooked Joe's inflation crisis has raised costs for small businesses like this one by more than 20 percent already, and it's going much higher. Biden's energy crisis has hurt sales by nearly tripling the cost to fill up a sportsman's 355-gallon gas tank. Think of that, three times higher. Soaring interest rates, which is even a worse problem, make boat loans much more expensive, makes it very hard for people to buy boats, and all of this horrible 
stuff is happening against your incredible American worker. Under Biden, household incomes have been crushed by nearly $7,400 a year. Does anyone know that? Marjorie, did you know that? Under Trump, incomes increased by more than $8,000 a year with no inflation. We didn't have inflation. A vote for crooked Joe Biden is a vote for inflation, taxation, submission, and failure. It's what it is. A vote for Trump is a vote for more jobs, higher wages, and more boats, cars, trucks, and airplanes stamped. Made in America and made in South Carolina. Here are some of the first steps I'll take to rescue our workers, manufacturers, and small businesses from the burning wreckage of Bidenomics as soon as we get back into the Oval Office. We got to get back fast. I tell you, if we don't get back, I really believe this country is finished. I really believe it. I hate to say that. It's horrible. And Marjorie is nodding her head, and Henry's nodding his head, so I can't be the only one that thinks that. But I think this country, I think this country will be finished. They're destroying our country so stupidly, so evilly. To rapidly reduce inflation, I will end Joe Biden's war on American energy and reclaim energy independence. Three years ago, we were totally energy independence, heading over to energy dominance, right, Russell? For our next term, I've set the ambitious goal of achieving the number one lowest cost of energy and electricity anywhere in any major industrial nation on Earth. And we'll be there within six months. In other words, we will drill, baby, drill. We're going to be drilling. We're going to be drilling like we were doing. For decades, politicians like Crooked Joe viciously betrayed South Carolina workers. You know that. Look at what's happened to your state in the last few years. Short time ago, you had the best numbers you've ever had, and now they're rapidly coming down. Rapidly, rapidly, like nobody's ever seen before. It has nothing to do with you. It has to do with people that are very stupid people, and I think very evil people in the White House. Your state lost one in three manufacturing jobs after Biden supported the NAFTA disaster and China's entrance into the WTO. That was a long time ago. But it showed his thinking. It was a disaster. The World Trade Organization, a disaster. China took advantage of everybody for years. I've been speaking about it for a long time, and I did a lot about it when I got into office. China paid us hundreds of billions of dollars. Not one president got 10 cents from China. I got hundreds of billions of dollars from China. They weren't too happy with me. Hence the China virus. If it were up to Crooked Joe Biden, every single job here at Sportsman Boats would be shipped off to another country. Biden puts China first, Mexico first, Ukraine first, Europe first, Asia first, illegal aliens first, above our great veterans. You know that. Puts the illegal aliens above our veterans. Our veterans live like hell. And uh, you know what? You see what's happening. You ever see the illegal aliens? Are one the weirdest thing. They come in by the tens of thousands, sometimes a day, and they all have, they have cell phones. I'm saying, where did they get the cell phones? Everybody has a cell phone. They're all talking in these beautiful cell phones, and they're expensive ones, too. They're nice ones. Somebody who's into that said, those are good phones. And then I say, who, pay, who pays their bills? don't have cell phones, do they? But they put illegal aliens first and everyone first, but he puts America last, he puts our military last, he puts our veterans last, he puts workers last, he puts small businesses last, he puts everything that's good and proper last. He puts it last. It's crazy. I put America first every single time, every single time. I ended NAFTA, the worst trade deal ever made, and replaced it with the USMCA, that's Mexico and Canada. The best trade deal ever made in this nation, although I must tell you, my deal with China was very good, too, but I don't talk about it because of COVID. I, that was a step too far. But we did the USMCA, and they're trying to renegotiate. Mexico and Canada are trying to renegotiate it now because the deal turned out to be so good for us, and I wouldn't do it. We suffered with NAFTA for many years, for decades. Now, we didn't renegotiate it. We should have. We didn't. 
To further create a level playing field for our workers and small manufacturers, in our next term, I will impose across-the-board tariffs on most foreign-made goods. That's going to let your businesses compete. I'll also pass the Trump Reciprocal Trade Act. In other words, if China or any other country makes us pay a 200 or 300 or 100 percent tariff, we will make them pay a reciprocal tariff of the exact same amount. And we were all set to get that done, and then we got hit with COVID. I will revoke China's first and most favored nation's trade status. They have a most favored nation because they're a developing country. The way I look at our country, we're a developing country, too, because our country's gone to hell. And we will impose stiff penalties on China and any other trade cheaters and abusers. And we, we did that at a level that nobody's ever seen. You know, I gave $28 billion to the farmers of our country. Some of you got that. That's why I said, I'm never going to lose Iowa. I'm never going to lose Nebraska. I shouldn't be so confident, right, Marjorie? But I said, how are they going to vote? I got the farmers $28 billion from China. Nobody ever got — nobody even thought of doing that. Did anybody think they thought — you think Biden says, let's see, how can I get some money from China for the farmers? No, he wants to get it for himself. I will also resume our historic regulation cuts and get Washington bureaucrats out of your wallets, out of your lives, and out of your businesses. In just one example of Crooked Joe's extreme regulatory attacks, the Biden administration is right now trying to bludgeon the boating and maritime industry. We were just discussing it with a lot of boat companies back there that create a lot of jobs and are having a hard time. With a boat speed limit of less than 11 miles an hour, about 10 miles an hour. In other words, like a slow golf cart. It's like a — think of it — along the entire eastern part of our country. This is supposedly in the name of preventing whale strikes. But you have a better chance of being struck by lightning than hitting a whale with your boat. There has only been — listen to this — one such whale killed off the coast of South Carolina in the last 50 years. But on the other hand, their windmills are causing whales to die in numbers never seen before. Nobody does anything about that. They're washing up and show. I saw it this weekend. Three of them came up. They wouldn't you wouldn't see it once a year. Now they're coming up on a weekly basis. The windmills are driving them crazy. They're driving — they're driving the whales, I think, a little batty. And they're washing up on shore at levels never seen before. And they want to stop your boats one in 50 years. Can you imagine that? The Biden speed limit will demolish the charter fishing business, crush boat manufacturers, and desecrate your cherished low country traditions. It's going to desecrate those traditions. That's why today I'm announcing that when I'm reelected on day one, I will cancel Biden's ridiculous speed limit regulation. Day one. Day one. First day. We will take care of the whales, but we will also take care of the workers, the boaters, the fishermen of South Carolina. We'll take good care of them, all of them, including the whale. For that reason, I will also rescind and revise Biden's absurd restrictions on recreational fishing, including red snapper and bottom fishing. You know what I'm talking about, right? You know what that means, Henry? I don't know. Do you, are you a fisherman, Henry? He knows what it means. He knows. But we'll take care of that stuff all in that first period of a day or two. Maybe I'll need three. Okay, we have to get it written up, okay? But we're going to get it done, like, day — just about day one. We will not allow Crooked Joe to destroy the South Carolina way of life. It's an incredible way of life. It's a culture, a beautiful way of life. It's no wonder that far-left lunatics are getting desperate to stop our movement by any means necessary. As you know, Crooked Joe and the radical left thugs have weaponized law enforcement to arrest their leading opponent. Me, I'm their leading opponent. I'm their only opponent on fake and phony charges. I went through a whole life. I never heard the word indictment. All of a sudden, every day, I'm getting indicted. In fact, I'm getting a little concerned because we had a poll this weekend that was so big, I said, um, here we go, more indictments. Every time we get a good poll, we get indicted. This is high-level election interference, and it's happening for a single reason, because I'm the only candidate they do not want to run against. You know, they talk misinformation, disinformation. They're close enough. You know, somebody said, what's the difference? I said, I can tell you the difference, but they're very close. But they're very good at misinformation, disinformation. They say, 
They see Trump is leading by 55 points. Think of that. And leading, leading by 10 points against him. The Washington Post, ABC, 10 points. That's a lot, you know, because it's like considered a lot. It's hard for Republicans to lead by that much in the fake news media. The fake news media doesn't want to do that. But, but when they see these numbers, they get crazy. But we're leading by Ron DeSanctimonious. We're beating him by 56 points. You know, it's amazing. In yesterday's NBC News poll, I'm leading all of the Republicans in numbers like nobody's actually seen before. And we're at just about 60 percent already, and we're going up, and we're the only ones going up. They're going down. They're going down, down, down. They ought to stop wasting their time. You know, they're wasting a lot of time on these ridiculous debates that nobody's watching. Their last debate was the lowest-rated debate in history. That's a good compliment, isn't it? Now, what was I doing, Marjorie? I was someplace else, wasn't I, huh? I was doing another interview. We had 271 million people listening to the Tucker Carlson interview. That's an all-time record. You know what the second was? It was Oprah Winfrey interviewing Michael Jackson. That was 15 years ago. We beat him by 150 million. That's a lot. I'm also beating Biden in the general while DeSantis and all of these other people are losing, and they're losing big. And in the new South Carolina poll, I'm way up, close to 51 or 52. And we're beating your former governor, who's not nearly as good as your current governor, by the way. And we're beating, not even close, by the way. And uh, we're beating uh, everybody by a lot. I mean, it's just been an incredible thing. And I just want to thank a lot of the people sitting up front. Some of them are such good politicians that have helped me that they're way in the back. They're not sitting up front. They don't want to be up front, Russell. They want to be in the back. I don't know. I think they're pretty good politicians, too. But we're, uh, I just want to thank everybody here and everybody all over because you've been incredible. Because it's important that we win. You know, the way you really win, they cheat like hell. That's all they're good at is cheating in elections. That's the only thing they do well. They cheat like hell. And the way you win is you got to swamp them. There's a point at which the cheating doesn't work, and we're going to have to swap them. They rigged the presidential election of 2020, and we're not going to allow them to rig the presidential election of 2024. Not going to allow it, or we're not going to have a country. Every time the radical left Democrats, Marxists, communists, and fascists, and that's what they are, every time they indict me, I consider it a great badge of honor. I'm being indicted for you. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Think of it. I have to call our great first lady. They love Melania. I have to call Melania. Melania. And I have to call my kids. I say, kids, and Melania, listen. Got a little thing. We're going to be indicted. I'm going to be indicted tonight. What for did absolutely nothing? Nobody knows. You ever see the reviews, the uh, legal reviews of these indictments? They say these indictments are ridiculous. Every single one of them. He, he uh, protested the election. What about Hillary Clinton and everybody protesting the 2016 election? What about all of those crazy radical left Democrats? They're still protesting. Now they're keeping a little bit quiet. You know, they're going a little bit lower. Never forget, our enemies want to stop us because we are the only ones who can stop them. They want to take away my freedom because I will never let them take away your freedom. That's true. I will never let them. I don't care. I don't care. I will never let them. They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you. And in the end, they're not after me. They're after you. I just happen to be standing in their way, unfortunately for me, but fortunately for you. Together, we have fought for this country like no movement has ever fought before. You know, this is the greatest movement in the history of the United States. There's never been a movement. MAGA, call it whatever you want. You know, Biden's always said, MAGA, MAGA, MAGA. If you said, what does MAGA stand for? I guarantee you he couldn't, ask, he couldn't answer. I said, MAGA means make America great again. I guarantee you, if you said, uh, Mr. Biden, explain to me, what does MAGA mean? What does it mean? He would say, ah, so radical, radical. No, it means make America great again. We want to make America great again. And now we have to do it all over again because they've destroyed large pieces of what we did. We created the most secure border in the United States history. 
and built nearly 500 miles of border wall when I said to Mexico, you will pay for the wall. They largely did because they supplied us free of charge 28,000. The cost of the wall, I said, nope, that's an easier way of doing it. There was hardly a mechanism for them to pay for the wall, but I said, you'll pay for the soldiers. And we had the best uh, border, the safest border in history. Now we have the worst border in the history of the world. There's never been a country with a border like this. Not even third world countries, not even banana republics. No country would allow this to happen to them, no country. We appointed over 300 federal judges and three great Supreme Court justices. I fully rebuilt the United States military. By the way, much of it coming from South Carolina. We created Space Force, which everybody fought me on. We got it done. That was a big deal. Defeated ISIS. We defeated ISIS. Remember that. Everybody said, everybody said you can't do it, Marjorie. You can't do it, they said, Marjorie. You know that. Everybody was saying, you can't. Sure, it'll take you years to do that. I did it in two months. Because we have the greatest military in the world, not these characters that go on television, and not the people that did this horrible, horrible, most embarrassing event in our history, Afghanistan, the most embarrassing event ever. We have great, great military. They wiped it out in less than a month. We hit them hard. I'll never forget, sir, we're going to have it done in about four weeks. I said, you got to be I flew to Iraq, remember? And I came back. Remember that brave flight when we landed on a runway with no lights? And I said, I want the Congressional Medal of Honor for myself. I said, am I allowed to give myself the Congressional Medal of Honor, Russell? And they said, I don't think that would look too good, sir. I said, I agree with you on that. But I was the first president in decades who didn't start a war. Remember Crooked Hillary? Now it's beautiful Hillary. Remember when uh, beautiful Hillary said, he's going to start a war because of my personality. I said, <laughs> Russia and Ukraine would never have happened. China would never be talking about Taiwan, would never. Russia, so sad. Millions of people killed. I think the, when you find the real numbers, you're going to find they're much higher than anything that's being reported. When apartment houses and they say nobody was injured, nobody was hurt. To you, millions of people are dead. Would have never happened. Those cities and those cultures are all destroyed. You can never rebuild them. You can never rebuild them. Certainly not the way they were. But all of that was just the beginning. Here's just some of the agenda we will immediately implement when we become, we, we, we're going to become the 47th President of the United States. I will totally obliterate the deep state. We started, we fired Comey, we got rid of a lot of scum. Before I even arrive at the Oval Office, shortly after I win the presidency, I will have the horrible war between Russia and Ukraine settled. It's going to be settled. I know them both. It's going to be settled quickly. It'll be done very quickly. And I'm the only candidate who can make this promise. Prevent World War III. And we're a lot closer than anyone knows. We are a lot closer to World War III than anyone knows. But that will be a war like no other. That will be obliteration. This is an army tanks going back and forth shooting at each other. This is weaponry like nobody can even imagine. You don't even want to talk about it. On my first day back in the White House, I will terminate every open borders policy of the Biden administration and begin the largest deportation operation in American history. And I will also use Title 42 to end the child trafficking crisis by returning all trafficked children to their families in their home countries, and that will be done immediately. They want to go home. They want to go home. Horrible what they've done to children. On day one, I will sign a new executive order to cut federal funding for any school pushing critical race theory, transgender insanity, and other inappropriate racial, sexual, or political content onto the heads of our children. And I will not give one penny to any school that has a vaccine mandate or mask mandate. No mandates. I will immediately close the Federal Department of Education, and we will move everything back to the states where they can individualize education 
and do it with love for our children. You know, we spend a fortune on education. We spend more than any other country in the world by far. It's not even close. And we're last. Out of 40, we're 38, 37, sometimes even 40. We're last. So we spend sometimes three times. You have Denmark, you have Sweden, you have Norway, you have China. It's at the very top of the list a lot. And uh, we're like last, and yet we spend two and three times more money per pupil than they do. We're going to end that. Uh, South Carolina will run their own. Do you like that idea, Henry? You'll do a great job. If you have the right people, you're going to do a great job. It can't be worse than what's happening right now. So many people in Washington, building after building. We need maybe two or three people just to make sure they are teaching English in our schools. Say, uh, is everybody teaching English? OK, you qualify. I think South Carolina, as an example, in particular, a place like South Carolina, would do an unbelievable job with education. And they do it with love. I will keep men out of women's sports. I've been talking about this for so long. And I will sign a law prohibiting child sexual mutilation in all 50 states. Can you imagine? Can you imagine, Yvette? Can you imagine even saying that? Having to even say, child, think of it. I was thinking the other night, I was making a speech. I said, I will not allow child mutilation. Child mutilation, the word, is such a horrible word. And we won't allow it in our country. And can you imagine saying that 10 years ago? People would say, what the hell is he talking about? And actually, today, it's a big side. They mutilize. I mean, they want to they mutilate. They want to mutilate your children. These people are sick, just as I did for four years. I will fully uphold the Second Amendment. They gained no traction. They're gaining traction now. They're playing with your bullets, your ammunition. They're gaining a lot of traction right now. But, you know, keeping men, by the way, just to go back, keeping men out of women's sports, it's the craziest thing I've ever seen. And you have to look at some of these records. A great one is weightlifting, where for years and years, 18 years, this record stood, and you had this great female athlete. She was going to break the record. Her parents were there. They were all so happy. They're so proud. And they put, like, a quarter of an ounce on each end, right? And she went up and up and up. Oh, and she didn't make it. Then a guy comes on stage. He just became... I guess female, right? Is that a correct statement? He just became female. He lifted that sucker. Ding, ding. I think broke the record by like 140 pounds. One eighth of an ounce on each side. He broke the record by 140. It's not going to be broken anytime soon. Maybe in a million years from now, if we're still around, because we have stupid people here that will allow everything to be obliterated. Don't kid yourselves. And I will secure our elections because our elections, if you don't have great, free, fair elections and you don't have borders, you don't have a country. And right now, we don't have much of a country. We're laughed at all over the world. Our goal will be one day voting with paper ballots and voter ID. It's very simple. One day voting, paper ballots, voter ID. But until then, we have to make sure we win. We have to literally swamp them. We have to swamp them. We have to get so many votes out that they can't cheat, because they will cheat, and they will do things that Republicans don't do. They are very, very bad people in so many different ways. This is what we must do in conclusion to restore our country to greatness. The USA is a mess. Our economy is crashing. Inflation is totally out of control. China, Russia, Iran, and North Korea have formed together as a menacing and just a horrible, menacing and destructive coalition. Our currency is crashing and will no longer be the world standard, which will be our greatest defeat in 200 years. Our currency will no longer be the world standard. Look at what's happening. All these countries are going over to the yuan. That's China. What they're doing to us, I'll get that stopped in one day. I'll say, you get that stopped, or we're not doing any trading with you. There'll be no more trading. They'll be, oh, we would love to stop that, or we would like to stop that. But nobody talks to them properly. It won't happen with me, not even a little chance, just like Russia would have never invaded Ukraine, as I said, and China would not even thought about Taiwan. And you know what? He just said it. They didn't. They didn't. It was never a thought. And I, I'll tell you what, that was the apple
ended it. It was over. When Biden came in, in one week, he approved it. Is that correct, Marjorie? One He wouldn't have been able to even do it. And he never had the soldiers up there. He was never even thinking about doing it with me. He wouldn't have done it because I told him not to. I said, you, you have no idea what's going to happen to you if you do it. But he wouldn't have done it because of the oil prices, because oil was so low. That's why $1.87 a gallon. And it was even lower than that for a period of time. We would have left Afghanistan with dignity and strength and pride instead of our greatest embarrassment in history. I think Afghanistan was the greatest embarrassment in history. And I actually think that's why Putin went in. When he saw the incompetent, stupid people, the way they left, they took the military out first. I think Putin said, these people are really stupid. That's a different country than I've been dealing with for the last four years. Now this is our time to go in. I really believe that's a third reason. If you took the five worst presidents in the history of the United States and added them up, they would not have done near the destruction to our country as crooked Joe Biden and the Biden administration have done. You wouldn't have done. There's nobody. You could take your five worst presidents, add them up. I may have to change it to 10 because five is no longer appropriate because you can't even get close. I think I'll go to 10 from now on. Would people remember that, please? We're a failing nation. We're a nation in decline. And now these radical left lunatics want to interfere with our elections by using law enforcement. It's totally corrupt, and we can't let it happen. That's why you must show up to vote in the first. You have to just — you're the first in the South primer. Do you ever hear that term, first in the South? Do you know that, Russell? Is that a big deal, I guess, right? I kept you there, so you should be a big deal. I think I'll take credit. It's a big deal. But it is a big deal. You're highly respected as a state. Get everyone you know. Make sure they're registered to vote and get them out on Saturday, February 24th. It's a big time. Think of it. It's less than four months before the season starts. We start in Iowa. We go to New Hampshire. We come down here. You know, the beauty was when I came here, everyone thought Bush was going to win. And then they took a poll, and they found out Trump was up by about 50 points. Everyone said, what's going on right here? They thought Bush, because Bush supposedly was a military person. Great. You know what? He was a military. He got us into the uh, — he got us into the Middle East. How did that work out, right? But they all thought that uh, Bush might win. Jeb. Remember Jeb? He used — he used the word Jeb. He didn't use the word Bush. I said, you mean he's ashamed of the last name? And then they immediately started using the name Bush. Never forget it. But we came here, and everyone thought — remember, he brought his mother here, his wonderful mother. She was 94 years old, and it was pouring. And they're wheeling her around, and it's raining and horrible. I said, who would do that to your mother at 94 years old? How desperate are you to win? But we, we beat him by, like, 40 points, and we went on to a lot of victories. We won in — well, we won in New Hampshire big. We won here big. And we just went in and cleaned out the slate. And then uh, 2020, we did uh, — we got uh, — I guess 100 percent of the vote. And now we're at levels that nobody's ever seen before with competition. Nobody's ever seen the levels that we're at now. And most importantly, we're at levels against uh, Crooked Joe that nobody's seen, because you just don't see that with Republicans. They have certain advantages, as you know. They have certain uh, areas of the country that, regardless of good or bad, they want to vote for these people. I think they — I actually think they're changing their tune also, because nobody, nobody can want to vote for this guy. Nobody. And maybe he makes it to the gate. I don't know if he makes it to the gate. I don't think it even matters anymore, because they have been so destructive to our country, what they've done as a party, that I don't even think it matters. Who are they going to put in? A guy from California that's destroyed that state? They're going to put in Kamala? Kamala. 
Actually, our numbers are better against Kamala than they are against Joe, so maybe we'd like Kamala, too. But 2024 is our final battle. With you at my side, we will demolish the deep state. We will expel the warmongers. Get them all out of our government. We will drive out the globalists. We will cast out the communists, the Marxists, the fascists. And we will throw off the sick political class that hates our country. We will rout the fake news media. Those people right there, they're fake, so many of them. You know, when the Washington Post, ABC came out with their big numbers that I was leading by 10 points, do you know that ABC wouldn't put the numbers on? Do you know that ABC and the Washington Post said, this must be an outlier, meaning the numbers that they spend millions of dollars on polling, the numbers must be wrong. It was their poll. And that I watched. They didn't want to put the numbers on, so they covered the minor numbers underneath, but they didn't want to put the numbers on, and they didn't. Now, these are corrupt people. We will evict Joe Biden from the White House. We will continue, and we will finish the draining of the swamp once and for all. The great silent majority is rising like never before, and that is happening. I've never seen I've never seen spirit or enthusiasm like we have this time, more so than 2020, more so than 2016. And we had a lot. We had it in records, but it's never. Because now they see how bad these people are. They're evil. They're sick. And under our leadership, the forgotten men and women will be forgotten no longer. With your help, your love, and your vote, we will put America first, and we will make America great again, bigger and better than ever before. Thank you, South Carolina. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. See you soon. Get out and vote. Thank you. God bless you all. God bless you.